Tuner guys and gals, they get all the love. They get cheap parts, good reliability, and TikTok loves them, okay? Hey, don't ask me about TikTok, it's just, it's like, you go on there to make fun of it, and then you just, you can't, you can't stop. It's unfortunate, but it's not gonna be fine, okay? But there are some Euro cars out there that are a banger to own. They're fun, they're reliable, they have modification potential, and wheels, tire suspension that can be installed on them without needing to chop off a torsion bar. Sometimes, if you guys get into the Euro scene, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. But anyway, I'm Alex, alex.fi on Instagram, and today we're gonna be talking about the best Euro cars to own when looking to jump into the aftermarket top community. Let's go. Tell us a joke. Murray. How about another joke, Murray? No, I think we've had enough of your jokes. P.S. If you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe. It helps us continue to make banging videos like this. And if you're looking for aftermarket wheel tires or suspension for your newly acquired Euro car or otherwise, hit us up. You know what I'm saying? We have an aftermarket car gallery that helps you pick out what will actually fit your vehicle so you don't end up with bunk fitment. Because that happens quite a bit. Don't do that to yourself. Seriously. When looking at the best Euro cars to own, we also wanted to think about modifying your car because honestly, that's the most fun. Stock cars can just be boring sometimes, but cost is important. Reliability is important too. But you have to remember that as you modify something, that usually just goes out the window anyway. So we're bringing it to one of the most popular cars out there right now, which would be the BMW E46 330. Now, everyone wants the M3, and that is definitely the car on steroids. And if you can afford it and find a manual, you can buy that one instead, we won't judge. But the 330i is probably a much more achievable variant and has plenty of the perks that you would find in an M3. You can find the things like the six-speed manual, limited slip differential, a three liter inline six, and have plenty of torque and power to have some fun. These cars were made so much that finding parts and owning one isn't actually that bad at all. Now you're still paying a little bit of a bro tax on BMW parts, but it's actually tolerable. And plenty of people find the fact that BMW made a quality car. Plenty of people can find KW or SC coilovers to throw in this car with some rotiform RSCs, and you find yourself in a decent looking car that can be driven every day as also rear wheel drive. And I'm pretty sure that they have other trim models as well, but rear wheel drive is the win-win. And they really aren't that expensive, which means you can dump that extra cash into everything else that you could possibly want. The E46 330 comes with the power plant that you need and the reliability that you want and the styling that you want at a price that you don't really have to cry about. Next up would probably be the Volkswagen GTI. And people usually ask when I say that, they're like, which generation? My answer is yes. The Volkswagen GTI has been a car that nearly everyone and anyone could pick up and own really without even blinking. They're like the daily car of our shop. They've been affordable, well-made. They're small yet spacious and can look damn good with a bit of love. Older generations, if you're going into the old way back days, look fantastic with some small 14 inch wheels and some 40 series tires with some coilovers. While new generations look banging with some meaty square setups on blocky five spokes and air suspension. Plus, since they're VW, they're made in the millions. Now, sometimes VW is getting a little bit of a, a little bit of trash for their reliability right now, but in all honesty, the reliability is still pretty much there. These cars happen to be everywhere and they'll continue to be everywhere and they will just never stop making them. Communities for these cars are absolutely everywhere from YouTube to Facebook. And honestly, they just make a fantastic daily driver that also just looks Sharp, the coupe, sedans, and even the wagoons can look proper with the right setup. Add a blow off valve and you'll be in heaven until the motor blows up or until the check engine light comes on over 160 miles. But that just happens. You know, at this point, Volkswagens just, they should come with the light on at all times. And then when there's something wrong, it, it should just turn off. Next up would be the B5 S4 for quite a few reasons. Now, we mentioned the S4 even though the A4 is in there, but we wouldn't put them in the same category because really the S4 is different. When it was introduced, it was a banger of a car that rivaled the E46 M3 when it was released. Now, the B5 adds an element of normal carness with the fact that it has the added element of all-wheel drive four doors, and a platform that is relatively hard to rust, which is nice. Plus the fact that this is the S4 model means it's more of the performance oriented model. The B5 S4s are a little higher up on the price list, but definitely worth it if you can find a clean one because the 2.7 liter twin turbo is an absolute unique engine and owning it is so much fun. Had two of them, they were great, okay? They have a massive amount of platform potential if you know how to work on them. Now you got your rotiforms, your Toyos, and your coilovers that make this car that you can literally take everywhere, whether that's to a car show or to an autocross event or over to Minneapolis in the winter. 
Okay, these cars are also iconic. They feature the perfect level of honeycomb without being gaudy. They got LEDs, not halogens. Don't get the halogens. And a low swooping hood that you can barely see when you drive it. Makes you feel like you're driving a supercar. And if you've never driven one of these, we'd highly recommend that you do it because you probably won't regret it. For some reason, the interior just like doesn't, besides the cup holders, just doesn't age. And last but not least, we'd definitely be, we're bringing it back to a VW, honestly, the Volkswagen Beetle. And here's why. These cars are like a blank slate that don't get a lot of love. They're air-cooled, which makes them fun. They can do pretty much anything, and they're insanely fun to drive. Have you ever seen an air-cooled bug slammed on the ground not smile or be excited for that person? Exactly. Why not be that person? They're cheap, they're easy to work on, cheap to modify, and they're fun to own. They're unique, so you can bet that you won't see many others like it when you go to your local car meet. These cars look fantastic both when they're like patinaed or if they have a fresh paint. And whether they have huge air conditioning units on the side or they have a 3.6 liter Porsche motor stuffed into it, it's just insanely cool to have. The cars are a Lego block for you. And if you like to own something that's a little bit different than the rest, this is probably it. Volkswagen Beetles, GTIs, S4s, and things like that, those are all fantastic cars to own, mostly because they have an essence of reliability. Because guess what? You need to drive your car every day. And yeah, we did four, and there are more, but don't hate us. But what do you think is one of the best cars to own from the Euro side of the fence when you're on a budget? Let us know in the comment section below. And of course, if you guys are looking for aftermarket wheels, tires, or suspension, be sure to check out fitmentindustries.com. I'm Alex. We will see you later. Peace.